Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Trotman, infectious disease doctor at Cox Health. It's the fourth week in June. I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, I wanted to update folks on the status of our COVID-19 situation in Southwest Missouri and here at Cox Health. So, you know, we went through the, uh, the spring. We saw a good trend. Uh, cases were coming down. We were admitting uh, two or one patient per day to the hospital. Uh, our per percent positivity of our tests were starting to come down. And then what we've seen over the last month really is a, a pretty dramatic increase in our cases. We're seeing our positivity rate now up over 20%. If you look at this last seven days, 27% of symptomatic people that are tested end up being positive. And you know, we're admitting 10 to 15 people per day into the hospital right now, which is way up. We've had to open up our uh, dedicated ICU and we're, you know, we're working hard to find uh, sufficient staff. Uh, here's an interesting fact, over uh, the last year and a half, we've admitted 3,500 patients uh, with COVID-19 to the hospital. So we've cared for a lot of patients in the area. Um, we've learned a lot. Um, here's a couple of things that we've learned. And, and first and foremost, I cannot emphasize how effective this, these vaccines are. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of statistics that I hope will help people who are on the fence or struggling with making that decision whether to take the COVID vaccine. So here's a couple of things that we know. Um, we're admitting patients every day, maybe 15 a day. None of these patients are vaccinated. We are not seeing patients who have received the COVID vaccine admitted with COVID pneumonia. This is wonderful. So we know that of those 150 million people in the United States who've received the vaccine, they're not getting critically ill. They're not coming into the hospital with pneumonia. Now we do have people who are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and they still test positive. The vaccine doesn't protect somebody from sneezing or coughing in your face, and then you have viral uh, RNA in your nose and your test is positive. Maybe you developed runny nose, uh, loss of smell, short term, but these patients, people aren't getting critically ill. And it's, it's excellent news how safe and effective these vaccines are. I mean, we vaccinated 7,000 employees. Prior to the vaccine, we were having, unfortunately, our coworkers um, get ill, come into the hospital with COVID pneumonia. Uh, we even lost some some of our uh, co-workers uh, here at Cox. Since the vaccine, uh, co-workers who were vaccinated aren't coming in with pneumonia. So I can tell you of the 7,000 people that were vaccinated, some have tested positive because they've been exposed. They've maybe had mild or no symptoms, but they're not coming in with pneumonia. And so this is great news. It's almost like we have our own randomized control trial. We are still seeing our co-workers and employees at Cox Health um, become sick, even become hospitalized in those people who aren't vaccinated. So we really know within our own walls, um, this vaccine has been truly a blessing to keep our staff safe. So a couple of things that people uh, ask me about, uh, concerns about safety of the vaccine. Um, one of those is the notion of myocarditis or heart inflammation. This is something that we see fairly commonly after viral illnesses. Somebody has a viral, a cold or influenza and the heart muscle becomes inflamed and they can have symptoms of chest pain or arrhythmias. Um, this is really pretty common. In fact, after having COVID infection, maybe one out of 50 people have evidence of inflammation in the heart muscle. They did a, there was a big study on Big Ten uh, athletes in the Big Ten conference and they looked at cardiac MRIs and maybe up to 2%, uh, you know, one in 50 of those people that had COVID had some degree of heart involvement. And let me contrast that with the myocarditis being described after the vaccine. So if we've given 150 million vaccines in the US, we have a couple hundred cases that are being investigated, probably not any more common than in the general population, the normal ebb and flow that we see of this common syndrome myocarditis. It may be involved with the vaccine. It's typically uh, uh, transient. That's what we've seen so far. It's temporary, it doesn't result in heart failure. But what I wanna say is that the probability of developing myocarditis after having COVID infection is much higher, probably order of hundreds to thousands times higher than what might be uh, a side effect of the vaccine. So I don't think the myocarditis is a deterrent for me personally. I've given it to my teenage um, children. They've both taken the vaccine. So I feel very comfortable that uh, the myocarditis will work its way out and the benefits of this, this vaccine, as I talked about early, certainly outweigh this possible risk. Another question I'm, I get a lot about the safety of the vaccine is in young women, um, concerns about their ability to have children in the future, um, questions about the safety of the vaccine in pregnancy. 
Here's what we know. We know that women become pregnant after having received the vaccine. If you look at the uh, phase three trials, the same amount of women in the studies became pregnant um, in the placebo and in the uh, control arm of the studies. So I don't see, there have been no signals of infertility as being a side effect. I know there was a lot of uh, fear that was planted early um, and we've talked about that in, in uh, past videos, but what we do know is just in MMWR, there was a paper published where they looked at uh, 22,000 uh, pregnant women who received one dose, and there don't appear to be any uh, safety signals. So we know that um, from that large registry of 22,000 women pregnant that received at least one dose of the vaccine, no signals of any um, safety issues or concerns. So. I really think, you know, in my experience working in the hospital uh, every day, all day, seeing pregnant women become severely critically ill with COVID, um, disproportionate to women of the same age that aren't pregnant, um, I feel like this is uh, something we can comfortably say it's safe in pregnancy and certainly the benefits uh, outweigh the risk, especially in the evolution of the virus right now. You've probably heard of this uh, Delta variant, the variant first described in India. What happens is this virus evolves over time and we know that this Delta variant is more transmissible from person to person. It's kind of an evolution of that spike protein. And we know that it makes people uh, sicker. Um, our patients in the hospital look very different than they did a year ago. Um, a year ago in the ICU, you saw elderly patients. You could predict that they probably, uh, you could predict who wouldn't do as well. And you could predict that these younger people would probably have a self-limited, uh, short-lived illness. Anymore, we can't, I can't predict. And I, I, I look at a handful of patients and, and I'm surprised every day at the acuity of the illness in otherwise healthy, younger patients. So I want people to know that it is, we are still in the thick of this. Uh, we were doing great during the, the spring, the beginning of the summer, but by the end of June now, um, we're seeing a pretty significant surge. Actually, compared to the rest of the U.S., our rates uh, in Southwest Missouri are, are really, really up, disproportionate to the rest of the, the U.S., and it seems to track along with the vaccine uptake. So um, the take home message is that, uh, like I've explained, we have no signals right now that this vaccine has issues around fertility. We have no signals that it's not safe during pregnancy. Um, I cannot tell you how effective this vaccine is. It has been more effective than any of us would have anticipated. If you would have told me that we could vaccinate 7,000 healthcare workers at Cox and none of them would be hospitalized with COVID-19, I mean, that would have been well beyond what we would have dreamed of. So. Um, this vaccine's safe. We vaccinated 100,000 people so far. Uh, no concerns with the safety. I can't even imagine what a long-term side effect. I get that question a lot. Um, what about the long-term side effects? I, I can't even imagine what those would be at this point. We, we give you that RNA for the spike protein and that RNA is gone in, in a matter of days to weeks. So um, I want people to really think uh, about this. I want you to know that uh, I understand the hesitancy. I, I know where it comes from. So together, this is our moment. We really need to push our family and friends. We need to get vaccinated. Um, I, I can't stress how effective this vaccine is. It's been a pleasant surprise, um, but we don't wanna do this again in the fall and the winter. This virus may evolve and become another cause of the common cold. Hopefully if you're vaccinated, you have a runny nose, if you get exposed and infected, but. Other than that, um, this is really where we need to come together and we need to push, uh, get everybody vaccinated so that we can get back to normal.